everybody and welcome to another JASP tutorial. In this tutorial I want to go ahead and explore the reliability analysis in JASP. So we're going to do a quick tutorial focusing on Cronbox Alpha. As always I'm using the latest build available for Mac OS uh, from the folks at JASP. This is JASP 0.14 and that's the latest uh, uh, feature build preview build from the folks at JASP as of time of recording. Okay, so let's open up some data. Okay, so here's some data. This is the a data set from a fictional data set that I've used in some other tutorials as well as my classes with statistics, my, my methods and, and stats classes. So this is uh, an SPSS anxiety questionnaire with multiple questions. 2571 fictional responses and this was uh this was generated by andy field uh, a few years ago and so we're we're not going to focus on all of them in this reliability analysis because that would just be a bit unwieldy so we are going to specifically talk about question one statistics make me cry question three standard deviations excite me which is going to be a reverse coded one Question four, I dream that Pearson is attacking me with correlation coefficients. You can see how these are being phrased that uh, the as numbers get bigger on this scale from one to five, you can imagine that fear is increasing. I don't understand statistics is question five. Question 12, people try to tell you that SPSS makes statistics easier to understand but doesn't. And you can replace SPSS here with JASP. Uh, question 16, I weep openly at the mention of central, central tendency. Question 20, I cannot sleep for thoughts of eigenvectors. And question 21, I wake under my duvet thinking I am trapped under a normal distribution. And as you can see, we have scale values from 1 to 5, uh, where 1 is strongly disagree and 5 is strongly agree, which is why we'll need to reverse code standard deviations excite me. They definitely excite me, but I don't know about you. So we're going to use the reliability analysis module in SPSS, or excuse me, in JASP. So much talk about SPSS, I forgot what I was doing here. Um, so we're going to use reliability up here, and we're going to use the single test reliability analysis under classical. Okay, and here we have all of our single test reliability uh, options. So first and foremost, we have all of our variables, our question items, and we're going to bring over the ones that I said we needed, we're gonna focus on. So we're gonna do one, three, or it looks like we're gonna have to bring them over uh, individually, one, three, four, five, 12, 16, 20, and 21. Now you can explore the other ones uh, if you'd like at another time. So uh, by default, it brings up McDonald's Omega. We are not going to talk about McDonald's Omega. In this tutorial, you can read up about McDonald's Omega elsewhere. But I do want to note, when I before I change this, we have this note. The following item correlated negatively with the scale, Q3. And remember I said that we we're going to have to reverse code that? Now this module has a really good, uh, good and quick way to deal with that, just in case you're doing your, rea your reliability analysis before you've gone and reverse coded these variables. So imagine this is the first thing you've done before you've done any data cleaning, any, any average taking, or anything like that. So imagine that this is the case. So uh, I will get to that. This is going to be our second one. But let's, let's get some statistics here that uh, will work for us. Again, McDonald's Omega is on by default, so I'm going to uncheck that. And we are going to specifically talk about Cronbach's Alpha. So Cronbach's Alpha is a measurement of scale reliability, and it measures equivalence. So what's it, what it is going to do is going to take these eight questions, the subset that I've chosen here, the eight 
question subset, and it's going to do four versus four, essentially, what's called split half reliability. So it's going to split those items into two groups, and it's going to see whether or not the items in both groups give comparable results. Now, this is not a measure of whether the scale itself is uh, unidimensional. That is, it's whether or not the scale is a single construct or multiple constructs. That's what you'd have to do a factor analysis for, either a, an exploratory factor analysis or a confirmatory factor analysis or principal components. So Cronbach's alpha is only telling you whether or not your split half reliability, if one half of the items is the same for one person as well as everyone else. So that's what we see here. Now, with the correlation negatively with question three, because we haven't done the reverse scaled uh option yet, you can see that my point estimate for Cronbach's alpha is below what would be considered acceptable, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 range or higher. So there's something up here. It's kind of interesting, though, that uh, question three isn't adding more uh, reduced reliability, or at least lowering this number, this point estimate, lower somewhat. But that's fine. Uh, additional options you can get with this is Gutman's Lambda and, uh, 2 and, and Lambda 6. Uh, I don't know what those are, so you can. Uh, we're going to move beyond that. There are limits to my knowledge here. Um, but uh, we can get iter item correlations, which adds this to the table. Again, some issues will be resolved once we reverse code uh, question three. We'll get the mean and standard deviation for the scale itself, and this is only going to give us a point estimate uh, for the scale. Individual items. Now, because we have not selected McDonald's Omega or Gutman's uh, statistics, these are grayed out. If I check that, it becomes available to choose, but I'm not going to focus on that. So we could look at uh, individual item uh, reliability if we were to drop any, what would happen with that? We can get the item versus the rest correlation as well. And so these are all of my three correlations with the other, with the whole group. Now you can see that Q3 is quite negatively correlated with the rest of the group and this is the calculation this is the calculation that is being uh, handled for this note and then we can get individual uh, means and standard deviations for each of our items which is somewhat useful uh, looking down the road you would probably get the vast majority of this information from your descriptives module but you can get it here if you really really wanted to now here's where the reverse scaled items module, uh, well sub module I suppose, option is fantastic for reliability analysis. So all we have to do is put Q3 over here and it will reverse scale and you see now it's recalculating the uh, alpha as well as the item rest correlation. Uh, and then, of, of course, the mean and standard deviation will change, too, because that also gets flipped. And it gives you the note here. The following item was reverse scaled, Q3. And now we have uh, our point estimate for Cronbach's alpha as 0.82, which is, you know, 0.2 higher than what it was when Q3 was improperly coded. So you can see that we have a pretty good point estimate for our reliability, which is nice. The mean and standard deviation changed somewhat because of Q3's mean and standard deviation changing somewhat here. So this is, uh, this is I think, a fantastic little tool. Now, the thing to note is it does not change Q3 in the actual data set. So be aware of that don't immediately run to doing, you know, your your t tests or your regressions or whatever with Q3 with the, with the knowledge from this Q3 that you've reverse scaled it because it's only being reverse scaled within this module. So you will have to create a new variable to reverse scale it. Now, if you just had if you had question 3 reverse scaled 
prior to opening up reliability analysis, then you would put the reverse scaled version in this variable list and not the um, non-reverse coded uh, variable in this list. So I would say this would be Q03 rev is how I would name it uh, if you wanted to just use the uh, reverse coded variable in the reliability analysis and not have to use this because again this reverse scaled item is only in this module it does not change the reverse uh, it does not change the data in the data set some advanced options exist uh, as far as uh, what you would do with missing values pairwise or list wise um, bootstrapping uh, this is on by default doing a thousand bootstraps which is why you saw the progress bar up here because it is doing the bootstraps it is getting the unstandardized uh, Cronbax alpha estimation but you can get a standardized one if you'd like if you use McDonald's Omega you can get estimation in a confirmatory factor analysis and uh, and you can set your interval to an analytic interval or a bootstrapped interval. So that is how you do a reliability analysis for Cronbox Alpha in JASP. If you like this video, please leave a like. If you like this content, please stick around and hit subscribe. Please leave your comments and feedback down below. Thanks for watching. Bye.